Welcome to the Maldives of Cambodia or even Southeast Asia or is it? In this video I will be comparing this island that I am on now, Korong, and the island there in the distance, Korong Samui. Let's see if they really live up to the hype. Also if I had to choose one, where would I go? Hey guys, welcome to another video. We are going to the Cambodian islands. We will be taking a sleeper bus to Sihanoukville and from there we will take a ferry. Um, I'm very excited to show you guys what a Cambodian sleeper bus is like. I have no idea. I haven't been in one before. The buses looked ridiculous. They looked like party buses rather than sleeper buses. And just like in all hotels and restaurants, we had to take our shoes off as we got on the bus and then put them into a plastic bag. That was a first for me. We thought we would be more comfortable in the bottom beds, but we clearly were not. Oh, okay. We made it onto the sleeper bus and we're a bit lost for space. A little bit. Um, <laughs> the current situation is that we have our bags like in our lap. Yeah, not ideal. No. Uh, can we even see anything? No. We don't even have a window. Sorry. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> We have made it to the capital of Cambodia, Phnom Penh, and we are now waiting to get on our bus to Sihanoukville, which is a coastal city of Cambodia. And we did survive the sleeper bus, which was not what we expected at all. And it seems like uh, the second bus is also not quite as big as we expected. I mean, this seems to start to be a recurring theme after that car that we came in from Siem Reap to Badamag. But at least now it's a proper minivan. Um, yeah. We finally got in the minivan and we're in for a wild ride. It took us over an hour to get outside of the capital city and we picked up people and goods along the way. This scooter took up most of the free space in the van and a few too many unnecessary stops and the worst hot dog in a sugar bun later. We arrived in Sihanoukville five hours later. We were lucky that we arrived at the ferry just in time and got straight on instead of waiting another hour. The sea was extremely choppy though and it took us another hour and a half to reach our island. We've arrived at Korong Samlue! The 15 hours from hell on the sleeper bus, then in the minivan with the motorcycle, and now with the ferry. That was a very bumpy ride. And now we're still waiting on the pier as the last people to get picked up by a boat, apparently. It wasn't until we were finally picked up by our water taxi that we realized just how lucky we were to be able to reach our hostel. The waves were insane. After 15 hours on a bus, our first priority was food, but the puppies also made up for a lot of our hardship. We have made it to Mad Monkey Hostel on Korong Samluem, and it took us some time to recover from those two buses and two very rocky boats, but we made it eventually. And the place is really beautiful, but it was super windy, so hopefully tomorrow morning the ocean will be calmer and we can go off and explore. Tonight, excuse this noise, I really hope it stops tonight. Uh, but now we are just off to explore the hostel grounds and then we will have dinner and some drinks with the people from the hostel. And it's me and Zoe who I met in Siem Reap, and then Teresa will be with us again as well today. The rooms here are pretty basic and so are the showers, it's only cold water. Uh, there is also no Wi-Fi and very bad connection but the thing about this place is just the relaxing, enjoying nature and letting go of some luxuries even though they call this the Maldives of Cambodia or Southeast Asia. Zoe and I had some much needed espresso martinis to make it through the day and went off to explore the grounds. I loved the private huts and the bar pier. The next morning we had a good breakfast and decided to take our time relaxing on the beach a bit. Well, thank you for um, taking my spot for me. Yeah. Good morning.
morning it is a beautiful day there is a lot less wind and a lot more sun so we are going out on an excursion we are going snorkeling fishing and checking out some of the beautiful beaches on the island unfortunately we couldn't do the snorkel tour because there is too much wind um, there isn't here on the island but for the boat to go out there is um, so instead I've been catching up on some work some editing and the sand here is honestly the softest sand and the whitest sand I have probably ever been on. Um, so now I'm going off for a snorkel just off the beach here. When I got to the beach, I spotted Ella and Zoe and although I couldn't see anything in the water, we still had lots of fun. Zoe, but you've seen Zoe already many times. You're probably sick of her. <laughs> no, they're probably sick of me by now, to be honest. <laughs> okay, I was so lucky to meet these amazing women and to see them again and again in Cambodia. You can also rent a kayak here and we found out it was pizza night! But first, off to happy hour on the bar pier. girls are off for some drinks at happy hour which is every day from three to six um, and there is another bar at the end of this pier so that is where we are going now The pizza was absolutely incredible. It was followed by a fun Saturday night party with even a fire show, a DJ booth on the beach and free shots. I expected very little from the fire show, but we were left speechless. The next day I had to check out and move to the other island, but I had plenty of time left to join the excursion that was cancelled the previous day. The hostel reps had dressed up as ladies for an impromptu ladies night. Our first stop was the reef at Kokon for a snorkeling session. It was my first experience in the ocean in Asia and I didn't know where to look first. I saw colorful corals, huge schools of fish and much more. Getting back on the boat, I celebrated with the first of my two included beers. My mask stayed on my face for a while. Next up, we took the boat a bit further and stopped to try some fishing. Even though I wasn't lucky, some other people and the Cambodians definitely were. The final stop of the tour was an incredible beach where I finally felt like I really was on the Maldives. The sand was so beautiful and the water so blue. It was absolutely unreal. Our 
our guys prepared a barbecue on the boat and on the menu was some delicious marinated grilled chicken with rice and a spicy tamarind sauce. time to say goodbye to the girls for a short while and get back to the taxi boat with my bags and all of the puppies. What a lovely goodbye. I had to wait for over an hour at the piers on Saracen Beach. The beach looked so different to the rough day we arrived. To get to the other island Korong I had to take the supply boat for $5. It left from a pier on the other side of the bay but it was an experience seeing all the supplies being delivered to the islands. Not just food but even washing machines and scooters were delivered. The men have an incredible talent for not dropping anything in the water no matter how big or heavy. I wasn't the only person on the boat and I saw supplies for the hostel I was going. So I I felt reassured that I would arrive well. It was cool to see the boat stop at random piers and see the locals go about their business. They even did a delivery in the middle of the sea onto another boat. There were two Polish girls on the boat as well and we were treated to an incredible sunset in between the islands. The sunset wasn't visible from either of my hostels so this made me very happy. This did mean that it would be dark by the time we arrived on Korong after about an hour and a half, more or less. I made it to Korong with the slow boat. Um, but now I'm stranded here. There's no way of me getting from the pier to my hostel because um, walking along the beach, I would have to cross a river and I would be up to my waist in the river and I obviously can't do that with all of my backpacks uh, so um, I guess I'm stranded until the morning and there's no Wi-Fi no data nothing yeah I don't know what to do eventually I did make it to the hostel um, so I first I did have a bit of a meltdown because I had just said goodbye to all the girls that I had been traveling with for a while um, so I was kind of sad already for going solo again. Not that I don't like going solo, but um, I don't know. It just got me a bit sad. And also I hadn't been able to reach my family or like talk to them because I had no data. Also I had no way of looking up a telephone number or an email address uh, of this hostel to get me here. And there was just no one being helpful. In the end, I decided that if someone tells you no, you are asking the wrong person. So I decided to pack my bags again and get going. And all of a sudden I saw that a an information booth had opened up. So I went there and a woman was already asking for me if they had any solution. And luckily the guy said eventually, okay, it's not going to be easy, but you are getting on the bike with me and we will try. So for five extra dollars, he got me to the hostel. It was over like a path, a very narrow path with lots of rocks through the jungle from the main road up until we reached the back of this hostel. Uh, and I made it here anyways. I stayed at Nest Hostel, which is also right on the beach. The rooms were nice and there were two bathrooms in each room. It was located in the jungle a bit, so I spotted a monkey close to the kitchen. my final morning on the Cambodian islands and I am sad I'm not gonna lie being on the supply boat and seeing like how the locals do their thing but also how these islands are supplied 
I mean, yeah, it's you kind of get why it is more expensive on the islands for food and stuff. So I will not be complaining about that. Also, we were blessed with the most amazing sunset and the water was so calm and flat, which I was very happy about because the journey to get to the island the first day, <laughs> wow. Um, I'm glad that that did not happen again. So now that I've come here and I have spent some time here at Nest Hostel as well, on the other island, I feel like I can now objectively compare both islands and both hostels. Um, let's start with the food. I think the food is superior here on Korong at Nest Hostel. Um, I've had the most amazing carbonara, delicious breakfasts, very good fresh juices, um, really cannot complain about the food. The food was great at the other place as well, but this was just a bit extra great. Then the rooms I would say are also a bit better here because they are like proper made of cement and not uh, wooden huts. Even though they are more charming definitely at Mad Monkey. Um, I would say that just for like the little animals, the little insects and maybe other animals of the jungle, it will be more difficult to get into these rooms than the ones of Mad Monkey. Um, the bathroom situation is pretty much the same. Both have um, toilets with showers in them. Uh, here in Nest, they are attached to the room and at the other place, they are um, in a separate block and both have cold water. So it's not like one is better than the other in my opinion. The only thing that this hostel here in Nest does have is Wi-Fi and to be honest it's not that I'm addicted to my phone it's that I like communication and being able to research things and being able to um, like plan ahead and yeah just have control over uh, the upcoming days as well so yeah I would say that for that I definitely prefer Nest when it comes to the other infrastructure for example um, spending your day here at Nest it is pretty basic. You can play some volleyball and lay on the beach or go into the water. Um, but at Mad Monkey you also have the swings and the hammocks and all that stuff. Uh, also the bar on the water and I do prefer that. Also it is more isolated right here. You are quite close still to civilization um, which has its perks. I did kind of like the feeling of um, it just being us out there and I really really love the snorkeling tour even though I got so sunburned like oh, I've been in so much pain the past day and a half but it was my own fault because I packed um, insect repellent instead of sunscreen uh, and I was checking out and I was just in a hurry and it was unexpected because we couldn't do it the first day but I highly recommend it the reef and the fish were so beautiful um, here you can also do a few trips but um, they haven't really stood out to me so I haven't tried any of them each Saturday there is a nestival so it is a festival at nest um, but there is also parties going on on the other island um, and I wouldn't say one is better than the other something super amazing that happened last night is that once it got dark we went into the ocean and we swam with the bioluminescent plankton and it was so strong it was everywhere so both at both islands you can do this you just put on your swimsuit or not it's dark anyways uh, and go into the water and move around and the water will turn into light it is so insane it was so epic um, so definitely try this when you're here. Uh, I only found out that this was possible after my last night at the previous island. So this was my last chance last night to do it and it was so amazing. Other than that, I don't really know what the best place to get to would be. Obviously it was pretty easy arriving to Mad Monkey. We just took the ferry and then they picked us up with the taxi boat to get to the, to get to the hostel. It was more difficult getting here from that island. Um, and I'm going to see how the journey goes now uh, to go back to the mainland. Uh, since my ferry was both ways from the other island, I now am unsure if I can still leave from this island or if I need to take a boat back to the other island and go back from there. It's complicated. Uh, so let's see how the rest of the day goes. I am enjoying my last moments here. And yeah, then we are making our way to Phnom Penh, but I will keep you guys updated.
In the end, I had to walk for about half an hour along the coast to reach the pier of Korong itself, and then I just took the ferry from there. Um, so I didn't have to go all the way back to the other island and pay $10. Uh, I could just take the one there. Uh, and my hostel did confirm it beforehand. I've arrived in the port now, and I got a giant coffee, which I probably shouldn't have done, given that I'll be on a bus for five hours now, and I'll probably really have to pee. I also got some snacks for on the road, and I just booked a ticket for the bus uh, here at the same place where I booked my ferry ticket, which was Buvasi's. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be the same company that I crossed into Cambodia with, so... And it's also a minivan, and we know how that went last time. But anyways, I'm hoping to get to Phnom Penh, well, around 7-ish maybe between seven and eight. Let's hope the journey is smoother than getting here. The van was only for tourists this time and there was plenty of room. And the van got to the capital when I expected to arrive and I was reunited with the girls for my final days in Cambodia. That is it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss any of the next videos also from Thailand and Malaysia. Anyway, I hope to see you in those next videos. Bye!